be respectful of your time here and we're gonna get the presentation started. So I would like to say hello and welcome. My name is Tim Schapansky and I work for Associated Students Outdoor Adventure Program, which is a nonprofit at California State University Northridge. And tonight we'll be taking a tour of Yellowstone National Park. This tour should last somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes. And at the end of the presentation, we'll have some time for some Q&A with our ranger. So if you'd like to grab your water bottles, put on your hiking boots, and get started, I would like to rec recognize Ranger Allison from Yellowstone National Park. Thank you. I love that idea. Put on your hiking boots, grab your water bottle, and come adventure with me as we go through some of the things that make Yellowstone National Park so special. I'm Ranger Allison, and I am an education technician here in Yellowstone National Park. And I am coming to you live from the northwest corner of the park in Mammoth, Wyoming. So let's back up a little bit. Yellowstone National Park is in the United States. We are one of just around 420 national park units. And we are located where that star is. Most of this national park is in Wyoming. Some pieces are in Idaho and other pieces are also in Montana. And it would take you about 16 hours to drive here from California State University Northridge. It is considered a national park unit. It is the first national park unit that was created not only in the United States, but on the entire planet. All of these national park service units are protected and preserved by National Park Service rangers like me. So anytime you go to visit one of your National Park Service units and you see a ranger with this patch, that's a promise. It's a visual promise to you that we will protect and preserve the cultural and natural resources of that space. That being said, the Park Service Rangers were not the only people who protected and preserved Yellowstone National Park. This place had stewards of the land even before the Park Service was created. So Native American tribes have a rich history here in Yellowstone National Park, and we have 26 affiliated tribes today. So for thousands of years, this place was recognized as unique and special. And that's because we are on top of a volcano. In some places on the planet, there is magma or a heat source 30 to 50 miles beneath your feet. Here in Yellowstone, there are places with magma under the surface of the earth, maybe three to five to seven miles beneath our feet. That means that we have a heat source that's really closest to the surface of the earth. And that gives us some really awesome features here in Yellowstone. So we have heat and we have water. And because of those two things combining, we have hydrothermal features. So here's that word, hydrothermal. And if you break that down into two pieces, hydro means something, thermal means something. It's the combination of water and heat. So we have four features here in Yellowstone, four types of features that combine heat and water together to make some pretty amazing locations. And each of those can be represented in some way by a teapot. So if you can use your imagination with me for a minute, you have a heat source. If you put your teapot on that heat source, you're gonna start to hear maybe some water bubbling, very low, low activity, and that would represent a hot spring. We have hot springs here in Yellowstone National Park and they are home to millions and millions of microbes here 
and they're also one of the most popular places for people to visit in the park. Like behind me is Grand Prismatic. It has vivid colors. About 12,000 people every day during our busy season walk this boardwalk to experience Grand Prismatic. But Grand Prismatic and these hot spring pools are not the only hot springs we have in Yellowstone. Up where I am in Mammoth, we have hot spring terraces. So these terraces are formed when water comes up from inside the earth. It cools as it flows over the surface and it deposits sediment and minerals and it leaves shapes like this. So we've got that low energy but still hot hydrothermal feature. And some time has passed since we put our teapot on the stove. We're starting to hear more bubbling, maybe some gurgling, and that would be representing our mud pots here in the park. We have places in the park where this water is active and eroding rock and sediment away deep underground. And then it brings air and other elements up to the surface and it bubbles. So some of these mud pots sound like this. You can tell there's some movement in there. There are other mud pots that are more like a washing machine was left open. It's churning, it's loud, it's gurgling. And this is an example of something found by Mud Volcano in the park. I'd say if you're gonna visit a mud pot, check out Dragon's Mouth. So we've got our, our hot springs, our pools, and our terraces. We have our mud pots. Something else that a teapot is known for is steam. When that water is really hot inside, it escapes out of the spout. Sometimes there's a whistle, sometimes there's not. But there is an example of steam ejecting out of something in Yellowstone, and it's called a fumarole. So this is where that water is so hot under the surface of the earth, it immediately ejects out. It's one of the hottest features we have here in the park. It's not the only thing that ejects out of the earth, though. Probably our most famous hydrothermal feature here in Yellowstone happens when you've got that teapot, there's a lot of energy, there's a lot of pressure building up, and let's say there's a tiny hole, it just can't hold all that pressure in that water anymore, and it erupts, causing a geyser. We have more than half of the planet's hydrothermal features here in Yellowstone National Park. I would say our most famous geyser is Old Faithful. And it's called Old Faithful because it erupts on a pretty regular schedule. Rangers here in the park, down in the Old Faithful district, can predict with about a 10 minute window when that feature will erupt. So people can plan their day around seeing the world's possibly most famous geyser. So we have these Hydrothermal features, thanks to the volcanic activity that has been in Yellowstone's past. But that's not all that comes from the volcano or those earth processes. We have really varied landscape here in Yellowstone National Park. We have our own mountains. We've got a high elevation lake. We have rolling plains. We even have our own Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And humans are not the only living things to enjoy this ecosystem and these varied opportunities of food, water, and shelter. We have tons of wildlife. So here is an example or a photo of just a few animals that you could potentially see here in Yellowstone National. And if I were to talk about all of the animals here in the park, I would be on your computer screen for a month. 
So I picked a couple of the top favorites here in the park. And how appropriate, because it is calving season for the bison. So we do have baby bison being born. We call them red dogs because they're about the size of a dog and they are the color red. And they look really, really adorable when they're little, but these animals can grow to be 2,000 pounds. And if you're having a hard time picturing a 2,000 pound bison, let's see if I can grab this skull. Check this out. This is a bison skull. It's about 20 pounds and it's a male skull. So we can tell or we can make an educated guess as to whether this skull was male or female based on the circumference of its horns. So since the circumference of his horns seems to be about the same size as the eyes here, we would make an educated guess and say this is a male. Oh, I'm gonna put this down. Oh, very heavy. Um, bison aren't the only animals that you are likely to see in Yellowstone National Park. And luckily enough, it is almost time for this animal to start having their babies too. And that is our elk. These animals start out so sweet, they look so innocent, but they grow to be these giant, majestic animals. Elk can live and grow to be anywhere from 500 to 700 pounds. These are really, really big animals and they definitely stop traffic. If you're having a hard time picturing a very large animal in front of your car, let's just grab this. Whoa, I can show you. This is one elk antler. This is humongous. So this is Justice Antler. If you can imagine this crossing the road, I would definitely stop and wait, maybe snap a picture or two, keeping a safe distance. I can't even pretend to put this on my head because I might take out the lights above me. So these are some really, really big and majestic animals. Speaking of really big though, we do have other predators here in the park. This place is teeming with wildlife, which also means it's teeming in food, water, and shelter for some of our other popular animals like our bears. We have black bears here in Yellowstone. And we also have another type of bear in the park. If you think you have a guess, Go ahead and drop it in the comments. We have black bears and... Okay, okay. You are, yep, brown bears and grizzly bears. Thank you. We have grizzly bears here as well. So if you see a bear that's out and about, first of all, that's really lucky. Second of all, the Big giveaway between these two animals is not just color, but where the hump is. So grizzlies will have a hump by their shoulders here, whereas black bears, usually their rump is higher than their shoulders. So their hump is their rump. So let's see, we've covered our hydrothermal features. We have covered bison, elk. We do have grizzlies here. We do have black bears here. Ooh, maybe our most debated animal here in Yellowstone National Park. Let's see if I can get you to guess this. So they are the most debated. They were at one point eradicated by the Park Service. 
We learned a couple of lessons about our ecosystem and holy smokes, you are all on the ball with this one. I'm talking about our wolves. Yeah, our wolf species, our wolf population is doing well here in the park. We have on average about 100 wolves over 10 different packs. Um, they have the appropriate food, water, and shelter that they need for a healthy population. We have all sorts of research going on in the park. There are biologists um, who say that the wolf population is healthy. But a good indicator is not only the word of our biologists and all of our scientists, but there is proof in the puppies. So we do have a healthy ecosystem here in Yellowstone National Park. I touched on quite a few hydrothermal features. A couple of our favorite animals, maybe biggest or most well-known animals here in the park, but there is so much more to explore and discover. Like I mentioned earlier, it is our promise as park rangers to protect and preserve the cultural and natural resources for everyone involved. If you are an American citizen, this is your national park. You have around 420 national park units being protected and preserved by park rangers for you to come visit, whether it's tomorrow or the next year or in the next decade or even your future generations of family. So thank you for joining me today and for participating in the chat. And I think now is a pretty good time to answer a couple questions. Tim, did anything stand out to you? Uh, yeah, so we, we have a few questions that people are asking. Um, it, one, one, let me pull up the Q&A here. Um, sure. A lot of them about when Yellowstone may erupt and maybe how they are tracking that if you have any information on that. Sure, um, let me grab this. So we have plenty of ologists studying the seismic activity. Um, they're studying the content of the water. They're studying how often or how hard um, or intense the earthquakes are here in Yellowstone National Park. And they say that we will have a very decent head start once this is going to erupt. So about a 10,000 year head start, once these ologists start to see X, Y, and Z, that's how we'll have, that's how we'll know. Um, let me grab one photo to give you an idea of just how massive this is here in Yellowstone. Um, is there a way to ask how many of you have visited Yellowstone before? While I grab this photo. We'll put a poll up. If you can answer the poll here, just click on it and we'll see how many of you have been to Yellowstone before. Okay. So while you're voting or while you're responding, this is a map of the park. So this border, this green piece right here that comes across, does some squiggles and down, that is the border of Yellowstone National Park. The orange circle is the caldera that was left behind on the most recent major eruption, which was 640,000 years ago. So this caldera is about, in some places, 40, 45 miles across, which gives you an idea of how giant that heat source is under our feet. A uh, couple questions. Um, oh, our poll's up here. So we have uh, some people who have said yes and some people who hopefully will be joining you soon out there. Yeah. And then um, one of the questions is uh, that we've had a couple of is how hot are the geysers in Yellowstone? Awesome. So I do not have a specific number for you. Um, I can tell you that one of my favorite features called Barrel Spring can get to be sometimes over 188 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface. 
Um, there is water here in Yellowstone that will burn you, will give you blisters. In some places, the water in these hydrothermal features have the pH of battery acid. So there is a policy in the park. We ask that you don't touch any of the water that's coming from a hydrothermal feature because even though it looks like it's clear and it looks like it's okay to touch, or maybe the guide that you just watched touch the water seems fine, you never know what exactly is living in that water as a microbe or what the pH is gonna be. Um, when is a good time to visit Yellowstone? Time All the time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Yellowstone all the time, um, but really it just depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for hiking, if you're looking for um, snowshoeing, obviously there are some very winter specific and summer specific activities. Um, it is my high recommendation to see the park in both that summer, spring, fall time, but also the stunning winter time. Okay, we'll, we'll try to get a couple more here. Um, if you wouldn't mind just letting us know right now if Yellowstone Park is open and what are some of the CDC and federal government guidelines going on? Awesome. Um, so currently the park is closed to in-person visitation. And as decisions are made, we are gonna make all of that available to you as we get that information. So whether it's on our Facebook page, we do have an Instagram, um, but the most ideal for you to check would be our website. Um, if you Google Yellowstone current conditions, that will give you an update on the current conditions here in Yellowstone and what to expect. Great, and then we will, um, places to stay in Yellowstone, camping or lodging. Excellent point. Um, so we have camping options and lodging options. We have a nonprofit partner, concessioner, oh, excuse me, we have a concessioner and a nonprofit partner. Um, Yellowstone Forever kind of helps us on some aspects like grants, but Zantera and some other of our for-profit concessioners help us help people get into the park and spend some time here. So Zantera has lodges in most of the major stations, duty stations here in Yellowstone. And there are also campgrounds. Um, you can pick whether you would prefer to camp in your RV. We have hookups for that in Bridge Bay. If you would rather camp in a tent or a hammock, there are other options for you as well in campgrounds. Not to mention all of our backcountry camping sites that would be available for you to use. How many hiking trails do you think there are in Yellowstone? I don't have a guess for how many trails, but I do know that there are around, maybe even over 900 miles of hikeable trails here in Yellowstone. Cool. One trail even goes all the way through this caldera here. It's called the Mary Mountain Trail and it'll take you through a hydrothermal area and some woods. There's Mary Lake in the middle. It's a very beautiful hike. Um, it's about 19 to 21 miles, depending on if you lose your path a little. Cool, thank you. Um, what are some other types of mammals in Yellowstone besides elk and bears and wolves? Excellent. Someone out there is loving the underdog, the little guy. Let me get some pictures for you. Oh my goodness. We are teeming with wildlife here. Um, the first one that came to mind is we have rabbits. They are currently in the middle of changing from their winter coat to their non-winter coat to help them camouflage from their predators. So we do have those animals. We have pikas who live in our rocks and they cache leafy greens as snacks. We have some bigger but smaller mammals like wolverines. And let's see if I had to pick one more. Let me see. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, probably our yellow-bellied marmots. 
So we have tons of wildlife here. If you're interested in all of the mammals and the options of you to see here in the park, I suggest going to Yellowstone's website and searching mammals. We have a whole web page about all of the mammals here in Yellowstone. Great. Great. Allison, I would like to thank you for coming out today or this evening for you um, and joining us on this. Um, I would like to, uh, if everybody could just give her a quick little round of applause and say thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, we would love to see you back with us maybe sometime this summer. Um, okay. we can talk about some other parts of Yellowstone that we didn't touch upon today. Um, those that are here, um, if you go to nps.gov backslash yell, Y-E-L-L, -L, that'll take you to their webpage. And then you can look up some of the information that Allison gave us. If you are looking at any other events that we might be hosting in the near future, um, please go to, you can Google CSUN Outdoor Adventures and find our webpage. We will be hitting some other parks um, in the United States, so some a little bit smaller than Yellowstone, um, but still national parks and beautiful places in their own right. So, um, Allison, I'd like to thank you again. I'd like to thank you, Caitlin, for interpreting for us. And I hope everyone here has a wonderful evening and enjoy your week. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And if you are curious about Yellowstone, if you want to get those views of outside in the park, check out Yellowstone's Facebook page. We have videos with our education team that we're recording about twice a week. And we would ha be happy to have you on there as well. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a good one, all. Bye.